I want to bring in former prosecutor Paul Callan, part of our expert panel. Paul, it's great seeing you. I thank nice you. So, here. 34 counts, 34 business records, 34 decisions to the jury to make. As a prosecutor, how are you seeing this phase being carried out right now by Juan Merchan? Well, what's happening now is maybe the most important thing in the case, and that is the judge's charge to the jury. Um, this case involving uh, the former president is extraordinarily complicated as a false business uh, records case. And unusual. Totally unusual. And in order for him to be guilty of a felony here, they have to, of course, link it to a second crime. And they're saying an election law crime, uh, because the money, the 130000 that was paid to Stormy Daniels was really a campaign contribution in kind. And that has to be listed in a formal record, which it was not. And uh, so I've never seen a falsifying business record case that had to tie into the federal election law. So it's, it's a case of first impression, and how this judge charges the jury is very important. Now, that last charge is a very surprising one, Why? saying... Well, he's an eyewitness, uh, Michael Cohen, and to say to the jury that you can't convict based on his testimony alone, I mean, in theory, if he had a conversation that was relevant and he saw the entries, which he did, uh, I don't know why you couldn't convict on his testimony alone, frankly. But um, so that's a very favorable ruling for the defense in the case by Judge Mershon, who, of course, Mr. Trump has said is totally biased against him. Well, he got one from the judge here. That's a very favorable for the defense charge. I, and, of course, we're reading from notes from our reporters may not be exact verbate, but I did notice the word accomplice in there Temedio when he was talking about Michael Cohen. Did that catch your ear, catch your eye? Uh, it, it, no, than that, it, it was, I mean, I was more shocked by the other charge that we just heard, which I, I heard that and I thought, what is going on there? So explain that a little bit more. Well, you know, if, if to the point, if Michael Cohen testified and he provided eyewitness testimony, we had relevant facts, and the jury finds him credible, the idea that there would be a charge that they need corroboration specifically for him is an incredibly surprising charge. Because if, if he's credible, the jury's there, they heard him, they observed him. If they find him credible, you don't need corroboration. I mean— And that was a direct quote, by the way, that part. In yeah. this, and I'm quoting. Even if you find the testimony of Michael Cohen to be believable, you may not convict the defendant solely on that testimony. Yeah, I, I find, I mean, I'm very well, curious to see what my other colleagues... Well, that means is the judge, or quite frankly, he's saying that Michael Cohen was an accomplice. Yeah. And he was. Yeah. He's, he was a, yeah. he's an uncharged co-defendant here. So, and under New York law, you cannot convict someone just solely on the word of an accomplice. You need corroboration. So that's what that charge is. It's basically Michael Cohen... Trump was acting in concert with Michael Cohen and Alan Weisselberg, quite frankly. So, you know, that's why, you know, I think now we Steinglass spent so much time talking about corroboration, corroboration in his summation yesterday. Because he, he knew, knew that this was yeah. going to be... So you do that, defense, especially for prosecutors, you want to put the words that they're going to hear out of the judge when he starts talking about the law in the juror's head. This was corroboration. When you hear about cause, he caused. So the jury will go, okay, corroboration, yeah. The, the, yeah. So I think that's what this is about, that he's an accomplice as a matter of law. It, his, his testimony has to be corroborated. And the prosecution said, and it was going to be ringing in the juror's ears, there's a mountain of evidence of corroboration. I wonder how the defense feels about that. Adam. They lost. <laughs> yeah, well, just the, this idea that, like, okay, they tried to make so much of Michael Cohen's testimony being, like, the case itself. We've talked about it because it has just was so, so direct in their, their closing arguments. They just hammered it. It seemed like that was the closing argument. And now he's saying, well, it, it, even if you found him believable, that's not going to make or break the case. That's not going to make the case. Well, I think that's pretty much the key. That may, may not make the case, but it could still break the case if you don't find him to be credible. You have to believe, for the jury to convict here, they have to see a scheme at which Michael Cohen was at the center, and they have to believe him that these were hush money payments, that these weren't payments for legal services, that there's a lot that puts him at the center. And the prosecution's problem, and as I said, they didn't pick their witness. Hmm. 
They didn't want him to be the witness, but he is the central witness, which is he is a known liar. He is a, I think, an airport full of baggage, if I can say that. The difficulty for the prosecution is he's the one, and the jury has to find at least some portion of his testimony to be credible in order to convict here, plus the corroboration, plus the circumstantial evidence that goes along with it.